All right. Today on the show, we are talking about how you can prevent and reverse cellular damage with a product called Nano V. Um, this is something that I saw at a biohacking event and I tried it out one time and I was like, what is this protein folding thing? What What is this? <laughs> and I got really curious and I actually reached out to the company and asked if they would come on the show and educate about it because I actually think it's super interesting. So um, Rowena Gates is our guest today. She's a principal at the Eng3 Corporation who makes the Nano V. Um, and she's going to educate us today on this topic. Um, she is a PhD. She's very smart. And she's going to tell us what protein, why protein folding matters, how that reverses oxidative stress or prevents it from happening. What kind of applications this is for, you know, where you can find these things. Um, so yeah, let's get all into it and learn about the nano V here is Rowena Gates. Okay. So Rowena, I was just sharing with you before we started, I was like, I'm going to be real with you. I am so ignorant on this topic and interviewing. I, I hunted you down. I went to your website because I saw you guys, I saw the nano V at one of Dave Asprey's events. And it's basically for you guys listening. It's like, it looks like people are on oxygen kind of, there's this little thing going up their nose and there's this like machine and there's like liquid spinning around. I'm like, what is this? Are they doing oxygen? What is this? And they're like, no, this helps you repair the proteins and in, in, in your brain. And I'm like, what? And so like, I I admittedly, I was like, I've never even thought about damaged proteins. What is this? And I started going on this whole tirade with like protein folding and, you know, CTE concussion stuff. Cause I've been working with some guys coming out of the NFL and, and so damaged proteins, you know, let's start with some basic understanding for me and (laughs) everybody else. What, what is this? You know, how do we know about this? What is, how does this happen to people? What do we need to know? So, well, if we start with kind of where you come from, which is nutrition and gut health and so on and and other things as well, Mm -hmm. Um, when you eat food, you get the proteins you're eating are uh, amino are broken down into a chain of amino acids or broken down into separate amino acids in the Mm -hmm. body. And basically, those are the building blocks to create the proteins in the body. So yeah. it's not like the collagen goes right on the, the right. muscle fiber, but <laughs> yeah. it's, you certainly need the components. There's right. uh, 20 essential, 20 amino acids that everything's built out of, and then half of those are essential, mm-hmm. and half you have to eat, and the other half the body will make itself. Mm-hmm. And so having the right stuff in there is the first step, which is something I know you focused on for years. Um, Mm -hmm. But once these, um, these amino acids are in the system, they have to come together in a chain. And it's really interesting, all of us care about our DNA, right? It's like, Mm -hmm. we don't want DNA damage and all of that, right? The DNA only has one purpose. And that is that it's the blueprint for proteins. So it's really at the heart of this. It's the Mm. design of the proteins, it tells the body, which amino acids to string together. Mm -hmm. And there can be any number in any order. And so it's highly complicated. Um, Collagen is more than a more than a thousand amino acids. Some of them are just maybe a dozen. So there's huge range in what's going on in the body. And the um, those get built into the proteins that not only make up your body, they also do all the work in the body. Mm-hmm. So if you blink your eye or have to recover from something or are digesting or seeing or anything your body does, those are protein activities. Mm-hmm. And of course, if that's the whole purpose of the DNA, it's kind of the whole show. <laughs> right. And, so, and, and think of like, I th- my mind's going to, cause I went through, like, I call it my accidental personal awakening when I just started eating more protein rich foods in an attempt to build muscle when I went on that journey. But uh, the biggest takeaway was like, yeah, that was cool that I got healthier and built muscle and lost body fat and blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, the biggest thing is my brain is operating differently now. So I think of like just the neurotransmitters of like having support for tyrosine and uh, for dopamine production and serotonin production and all of it, you know, uh, and it goes, you're right. It's everything, like every 
everything that we are <laughs> yeah. requires amino acids and, and, and you're, you know, you're kind of hitting on like the basic knowledge of like, you know, most of us, I, I'd say even the lay person who's kind of into nutrition understands that you need a, you know, complete chain of amino acids to actually create muscle protein synthesis and all this kind of stuff. So I think we can meet you at where you're at on that. And then where do we come into the damage aspects? Well, that is ongoing because we breathe. So as long as we okay. are alive, we're going to do oxidative damage. Okay. So it's just from oxidative stress. Like well, that's one of them, but we can okay. do damage in a lot of ways. Like right. Lifestyle choices, bad food. Yeah. Uh, too much toxins. radiation from the sun, even, you know, right. Things, toxins all over the place. Right. It, it's a stunning array of possibilities for doing damage to the cell. Mm, so anything that creates oxidative stress, high blood, chronic high blood sugar that's left untreated, right. chronic inflammation, you know, from yes. all of those sources you just listed and more yeah. um, food sensitivities right. that were unaddressed and things right. like so that, right? Not just oxidative damage. It's just that oxidative damage is the biggest chunk okay. of it. Okay. And it happens on an ongoing basis. There's no avoiding it unless you die, which is yeah. a preferable alternative. <laughs> so um, those... The amino acids, first of all, I, I should step back just a little bit okay. because that chain of amino acids, um, once it forms the chain, it's the primary shape of a protein, but it's not functional. It doesn't work until it folds into a more complex shape, a 3D shape. And it's that 3D shape that actually determines its function. And so the it's the whole like the final step, but the whole deal is getting it folded correctly into the 3D shape, but they can also be damaged after they're folded. So you don't want, you know, any free radical coming along and disrupting the shape of that protein because then it won't work either at all or correctly. Mm. And when they get misfolded, then you get things like tangles and plaques. Yeah. It's going to sound familiar for the brain yeah. side of things. Right. And so you don't, that can be even worse is to have these damaged proteins around. Yeah. And that's why people work to get the sentient cells out of their body and so on, because you right. want to get rid of the things that are going to get in the way. Um, but most of the proteins, if, if a protein got damaged and it wasn't functioning, most often it would either refold or it could be um, through autophagy, essentially shredded down to the amino acids and they build something else. Mm -hmm. And so these processes are going on all the time. Mm. And um, then the body is constantly getting damaged. It's constantly repairing mm. itself. And it's really amazingly brilliant what's going on in there. I, my, my, more quantum esoteric, I don't know what you want to call it side is like, Oh, the 3d shapes depend. It's just reminding me of like sacred geometry and just all of that. I'm like, oh, it's, it's so cool. And to give you an idea of how amazing it is in 2021, the um, science make the science breakthrough of the year award for the whole year was for artificial intelligence that predicted the folded shape of the protein. Wow. Because the protein folding is huge. And then when they could predict the shape, they could do interventions like pharmaceuticals and so on. They could try to build it and uh -huh. go in and block receptors or trigger things, which is a, a right. very much a body overriding approach. Yeah. <laughs> and it can save lives. It could be a wonderful thing. Uh -huh. uh, it's just a very different approach from ours, which, which is more root cause, like heal. Yeah, it's, it's from the so, inside. Yeah, it's so basic. It's crazy that it's so basic, but it's essentially we're going to create a better environment for the protein. That's the it. Environment for every it's everything is water. It's the cellular mm. water. They're all living in water. Mm. So if we can change that energy state of the water slightly in a way that supports that protein folding process, then you get. Uh, an improvement and function of the proteins of the cells and of the body. So, so you're saying incredible. that this, the state of the intracellular water is like affecting how the proteins are folded. Is that what you're saying? It's not um, what they turn into. It, it enables them to fold and they've Got known it. It for quite a long time that uh -huh. 
the, an unorganized chain of amino acids can't just go into a complex shape without using some kind of energy. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and so it's been known for a long time that it has to get that energy from the water. Mm. And the, the energy is not like heat or something that we're more familiar with. It's entropy. So it's the difference between a structure and chaos. <laughs> it's the transfer of the order uh, from the water to the protein. So the water loses its, its nature, its ordered uh, nature, and the protein uses that, um, becomes wow. more structured, more um, wow. ordered. And that, so that you know what I'm talking about with the order, really just, it's easy to think about it as the water molecules are more densely packed together. So they form these layers of densely packed together molecules on surfaces, which are mostly proteins in the cell. Mm -hmm. And then the protein, once it's got that state around it, can can essentially shift into the 3D shape. My I, my mind is just going with so many analogies, right? You're talking about the environment, and it's like what I'm hearing there. It's like when you talk about entropy, it's it reminds me of um, sometimes I feel that people need an immersion experience, like if they've only been around, you know, let's take a woman who's only been around like abusive men her entire life, from dad to husbands to whoever. It's like I'm like I want to expose her to a healthy man, like that she can just like be just, it, it's just like that. It's like, just, Oh, taking on that. It's like, Oh, I see, you know, yeah. that's how I hear this process is like, well, it's like there. That, yeah. That little, <laughs> that little bit of, you know, assistance. Mm-hmm. And then it yeah. can make a, a really big difference. And you're going to be familiar with this, I think, because um, this is where we can tie in uh, easy water and Gerald Pollock's work. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And so a lot of uh, your listeners have probably at least heard of that, but it's this fourth phase of water where right. it's more like a gel yeah. than a liquid or a solid or vapor. Mm-hmm. And it's that gel where the molecules are closely pressed together that's okay. highly ordered. Mm. And so um, we're lucky that Joe Pollock's in Seattle and, and he's a wonderful man. And so that's mm-hmm. been, that's been, that's, part of that story of explaining mm-hmm. how this works and why it works. Yeah. So, so let's talk about nano V. Can you, you know, for somebody who's never seen it, you know, can you describe how it came to be yeah. and what it's doing? Well, it came to be by um, the recognition that we now had technologies that were capable to do, uh, to emit the wavelengths that are needed to accomplish what we were trying to accomplish. And so when the the technology evolved to the point where you could do this directly by emitting um, certain wavelengths on across water droplets, um, that you could change the state of the water droplets. And when they're inhaled, that influences the cellular water. It transfers across the water in the body uh, very rapidly. Hmm. And so what this looks like is about the size of a, you know, a, an old fashioned printer, if anybody has a printer anymore, mm-hmm. and it's got an arm sticking out of it um, with a tube on the end. And you can either breathe directly from the tube because you have to inhale the humid airflow, mm-hmm. or you can attach a cannula, which is the oxygen breathing tube that you saw. Mm-hmm. You can attach the cannula and use that um, to breathe from it. And that way you don't have to sit perfectly still in front of it. So mm-hmm. a lot of, mostly we use the cannula. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what it looks like. It's got a glass uh, jar of water on the top of it. Mm-hmm. And that's bubbling water. We illuminate it for decorative reasons. Mm-hmm. And the the purpose of that water is to create the humidity. And so that goes through the device. It's bombarded by these specific wavelengths. Mm. And then you inhale the water that's been adjusted by the device. And just to give you an idea, because I'm sure you're familiar with some of these other technologies like, you know, red light or PEMF or, you know, various um, technologies use wavelengths. Uh, where red light is going to be, you know, 600 to 800 nanometers sort of scale, we're up at 12 to 1600 nanometers. 
So it's way outside the visible light spectrum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're using the wavelengths we use is because they can be absorbed by water Mm. and you have to absorb the wavelength for the water droplets to take on these properties. Mm. And so if you have something like a red light, if you put it up to a glass of water, it's not absorbed. You can see the red light right through the glass of water. Mm -hmm. And so it's, that's a very different mechanism from what we're doing. Mm. But there, these things are all very complementary. That's why you see people stacking them and using them together because mm-hmm. they really, it, it's, you know, we can, we love to work with these other technologies. Yeah. Nothing else is like the, what we're doing basically. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I was definitely, this was, I don't know, a couple of years ago. I was like, what, <laughs> what, what yeah. is this? This is new. Um, yeah. Okay. So like in terms of somebody listening right now, you know, there's driving in the car, they got two kids and, you know, why would, you know, for what applications might someone be interested in, so in this technology? The, the big ones are recovery and performance. Um, and recovery could be from chronic illness. Our company has a huge long history of chronic illness. You mentioned inflammation and that's related to almost many chronic and many autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it could be recovery from sports, people like you or any activities. And a a big one is recovery from stress, which we have more and more people using it that for that. You can see on a brain scan, an executive who's been stressed. And after a session, the change in the brain is really impressive because it's, it's assisting, you know, the, the system to come back into its, where it should be. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that if it's proteins that repair oxidative stress damage, there's no other way to repair damage except for proteins. And when you concentrate, you're burning a lot of oxygen in your brain and you're doing oxidative damage. And so it's just like with the body, when you use it and you're, you're really pushing it, then you, recovery is really important. Mm-hmm. And so this helps with that repair process. Mm. And then another aspect of performance, and this is measurable to athletes, is it's relatively, you know, it's easy for a trained athlete to see that difference in how fast they recover. But um, it's really interesting because I once got a phone call and it, the, the man just says, your, your device lubricates the fascia and I can prove it. <laughs> I love, oh, I love people like this. <laughs> and it, was, it was Gary Lynam at Human Garage. Oh, which I know Human Gary. Garage, it's worth taking a look at it because they're doing really great stuff with fashion maneuvers yeah. and self-healing, which is right yeah. up your alley. Yeah. <laughs> and um, But that's another aspect of it. If you have more lubrication in the fascia, that you've got, it, it impacts strength and performance. Right. And in in my opinion, thinking of the muscles as being sort of, you know, mechanical is sort of old fashioned. I think of them as more hydraulic that you, you're leveraging against the water and with the water in the system. Mm-hmm. So that. hydrating the fascia is a big, uh, a big factor for mobility and performance. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of um, human garage and, and Gary, and those, I, I'm assuming you're probably getting a lot of like uh, maybe chiropractors or, or yeah. offices starting to carry these, you know, like uh, chiropractors or functional medicine yeah. doctors. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also functional neurology in within mm, the, the chiropractic domain. Yeah. Um, a lot of fun- functional or integrative doctors and then more yeah. and more chiropractors, especially lately, a lot of individuals get their own and, um, that those are really then then athletes and performance of course um, um, high performance centers will will have it there for athletes mm-hmm. um, and um, uh, hyperbarics use it very smart to do nano v after hyperbarics for mm-hmm. a number of reasons cryotherapy centers places yeah like that and yeah. my goal is to get them into more kind of standard gyms where the public has access, almost yeah. public has access to them really easily. So that's a, a goal of mine. Yeah. I saw some of your, you know, testimonials and, and some of your, the athletes that are using it and seeing the benefit in it. And it made me think of like, 
older people to, you had some of that in there also in like the video I was watching, but you know, my, my mom has progressed Alzheimer's now. Like it's really progressed. And I think like, you know, I mean, maybe, but I'm like, I, I wish that earlier when she was starting to get, you know, she had type two diabetes, you see the inflammation chain is just going and going and going. And I think of like, as we're, you know, as we're getting older, it's like, there's so much available to us now, like this kind of technology that wasn't available to us very long ago that can make a huge difference on our body's ability to recover. You know, my first professional, you know, pursuit was training. And it's like, that is like the basics of the basics is like, there's no point if you can't recover, <laughs> like if the body can't recover, like it's, it's just creating havoc, you know, and I see you guys as a very, very helpful recovery tool, like system wide, you know, it's not just the brain, like that's yeah. incredible enhancement yeah. of recovery. Yeah, it really is. It's quite stunning and it's measurable. So we have double blind placebo controlled studies on that to show um, how much faster we can kick in the immune system uh, to re recover, or how much less lactate an athlete will have in their blood. Um, and we also have studies on proteins that are really, really compelling. And they also show that it prevents and repairs damage, which was pretty interesting to see. Yeah. Um, not every kind of damage, but right. certain kinds, like it won't prevent heat damage. Uh huh. But it will prevent um, damage when it's damage is done by chemicals or oxidation. And wow. oxidation is what the athletes are doing. So, right, right. Yeah. Can yeah. I share some of those data points? Um, are you yeah. able, allowed to share? <laughs> uh, to some extent, we definitely uh, do share them. We just don't publish them. Okay. Uh, and so they are, um, we don't push them out to the general public. Because right. I know there's always <laughs> limitations on sharing certain things, but. but, but we definitely do, you know, provide that information mm -hmm. and that, that is what we do. Actually, if somebody signs in on our website is we provide study results and, and information okay. like that. We don't just say buy one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, hey. so, and right. so that's really how we've, that's, we get very few unsubscribes because it's always something, you know, interesting and helpful in there. And, and we've also shown um, a reduction in DNA damage with the double strand DNA breaks, which are the hard ones to repair. And so, yeah, those are, those are all um, pretty compelling what is the, uh, you know, the prescription, like what is work? I'm, I'm obviously going to depend on the person, you know, but like for typical session frequency, you know, what, it, or do you have different protocols for, you know, different yeah. applications? What does it look like in the actual yeah, use? I can, I can give you an idea. And then there are doctors that have their own protocols, like right. doctors or surgeons, and some of them will pre-treat and some of them will only Very post cool. treat and so on. Wow. Um, my impression is just like with with sports pre-treatment's a good idea. You know, yeah. you set the body up for success. Yeah. But, um, generally we have three devices. So the amount of time depends on the device. The, the okay. two we saw almost exclusively are the two most powerful ones. Mm -hmm. um, and so I won't talk about the amount of time as much as uh, it can be as little as 15, 20 minutes a day, okay. but um, normally a person will do, uh, I, well, first of all, I should say, going back to your mother, there's a huge number of people who buy their own devices. It's sitting on their desk next to them, mm -hmm. and they're using it really quite regularly. And many of those are people that don't want to end up where your mother is. Mm -hmm. And so there's a huge increase, a stunning increase in the last three years mm -hmm. of people who are preventative, which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, but for prevention, you might just use it once a day, you miss a day or two a week, it's, you know, no big deal. Um, if you're trying to recover as an athlete, you're going to use it every time mm -hmm. you exert. Um, let me just add something in there, though. If you're seeking hormesis, you want to delay when you use it, right? You don't right. want to Right. right after, because you're trying to stress the body. Exactly. Like I don't take a bunch of vitamin C and glutathione right after I lift weights. Exactly. Like, I, <laughs> like hang on after, you know, after your later. washout period, then later you definitely yes. want to use it. <laughs> so, um, but the, then, so athletes are going to use it really pretty regularly as they train regularly. And then um, 
people that have chronic illness or are recovering from something also are going to be bigger users of it. Uh, we do have clinical results. I shouldn't say clinical results. We have results from a physician where the patient only used it twice a week. Mm -hmm. And um, they were, they were, you know, pretty, pre pretty impressive improvement with no other change in protocol. Uh, so there's reason to believe that if they are only using it a couple times a week at the gym, it's still even one yeah. use is worth it because we can measure it and show it. Almost all of our research is on a single use. Oh, wow. So even if you don't notice it, it's going to be good for you. And even if you only use it once, that's better than not using it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then in terms of, you know, you mentioned that you love combining that's so uh -huh. the health optimization way it's, it's funny to see, like, I don't know, people who've never really been exposed to optimizing health and like, it, it, I, if I have like a friend over and I'm taking my supplements, they're like, why do you take all of that? And I'm like, why wouldn't I like, it's so, <laughs> I'm so lucky that I, I, it's not that I have to, you know, people look at it as like, these have tos. And I, I don't know, it's a bizarre mentality. I'm like, wait, but we have all this available to us. And if, if there's significant data behind it and you notice that it helps you, why not? Yeah. Why not? So anyway, <laughs> let's talk about, um, you know, uh, hyperbaric oxygen, for example, you know, that's one that you feel like would be a slam dunk for somebody who has a lot of oxidative stress, maybe some brain stuff. I mean, I think so. Well, um, well hang on. There's two parts of that. Like one is the comb the combination of the use of it, because of course hyperbaric increases oxidative stress. It's right. You're flooding your body with the oxygen. And so it's a wonderful thing for, for many, many indications that are not, um, approved indications. Yeah. Right. Um, right. And so, it's, but then the nanovian combination is using it after. Uh -huh. and there's, two, there's two reasons for that. One is you're going to repair any oxidative damage. That's a really smart idea. Uh -huh. But the other is that after a, a dive, you're flooded with oxygen probably for up to an hour. Okay. It doesn't just disappear when you get out of the chamber. Uh -huh. And so while you're while you're flooded with oxygen, nanov will increase the utilization. Mm. And so um, mm. that's the, that's a key. You're getting a, an extra kick out of the hyperbaric dive if you oh. then increase utilization because right. a lot of people, you know, the oxygen is not the problem. It's the utilization. That's yeah, the problem. Right. Right. And, that's, and so I that's, that. I mean, we do solve it kind of by, we don't solve the problem, but we mitigate yeah, it. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Pumping more oxygen into old people that have trouble, but really I see what you're the saying. problem is utilization. Yeah. I love that viewpoint. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. And so, okay. so that's, that's one that um, we've had a lot of experience with the combined use for many years now. Um, with centers having, you know, great results by combining them. Mm -hmm. And uh, any of the oxygen therapies are kind of along those lines. Mm -hmm. But the NanoV is measurable improvement. If someone's low in blood oxygen saturation, it mm -hmm. will go up with the NanoV alone, mm -hmm. even though the NanoV has no extra oxygen. It's only right. utilization. And it's fine. I was just at a, um, down in Sedona, and um, the nurse there at this okay. IV place <laughs> said, um, I can, I can, because Sedona is a higher elevation and people, mm -hmm. you know, it, they'll have low blood oxygen saturation because they aren't used to the elevation. And she goes, I, I can see it in the blood. I can measure it. It's bright red, you know, if they've used the nano V and I can measure it with a pulse oximeter because they're utilizing it better. We don't add any oxygen. Mm -hmm. I so, love, I, I love that, you know, I have a, a friend who, you know, is very much into health. Also, she's a coach and we talk about all these, you know, just things. And we got off on a tangent about like, it's, a, it's about the health of the host. It's a, it's a, the environment. Like we, we get fixated sometimes I think on like 
playing with all the little variables inside instead of like creating a healthy environment for those things to just work well and thrive, you know, and, and, and you guys are doing that, right. You're increasing the health of the environment in the cellular water so that things can just do what they need to do, which is really cool. Yeah. That's been sort of our motto is to, to assist rather than override right body doesn't the body knows what it needs to do so how nano v impacts one person is how it impacts one person another person everybody else is going to be different because the body has different needs Mm. one thing that's really common is it'll have a balancing effect because everybody's body is kind of trying to come back into balance yeah and so that's another um that's one of those things that's measurable Mm. uh, in terms of of seeing um, blood glucose levels, for example, it'll mm-hmm. stabilize because the body's you know it's trying is trying to keep these things on the on the tracks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a powerful healing tool. And that's, that's always what I'm after is like, how can we create healing for, cause like stuff happens, you get oxidative stress, you got some sort of crazy inflammation thing, you know, you've got a bunch of TBIs or, you know, like just stuff happens. That's life. We get, we get banged up a little bit. And so you guys are coming in with this, like, let's nurture and do some healing on the inside. So it can just go back to doing what it needs to do, you know? Right. Love and that. another big piece of this for energy and for what you're talking about is energy levels. If mm-hmm. you can, if you can increase, you know, the, the mitochondrial function, you can get yeah. the energy levels going. That's a huge impact for the gut, for if right. it's everything, toxic, right. Or for, for mental performance or mood or any of these things, it's just, mm-hmm. you know, that energy is so critical to everything. Yes. And, yeah. Um, and so making the cell work, I think probably just a little bit better, you know, it's not a, a big sledgehammer. It's, it's, yeah, it's it, a help. It's a, a healer. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. the body can run with it at that point. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so for people who are interested in possibly like getting one of these or checking it out, should they go to the ang 3 corpcom website? ang 3 corpcom E-N-G-3-C-O-R-P.com. Okay. And um, then, and just to give you an idea, we have uh, we have the three devices, as I mentioned. And so that range is somewhere in the range. Should I, is that okay to tell people? So yeah, yeah, of course. Um, it's somewhere in the range from a little over 5,000 to a little under 14,000. So wow. depending on the three devices, the middle one is 8,500. Okay. Um, just so they know, yeah. And then, um, what people do is they share them within the family or within the friend group or whatever, because that's that, cool. um, and that's why we people will buy the smallest device and then they return it and upgrade to the the bigger one because they don't have enough time, and mm-hmm. and that's the difference in the device devices mm-hmm. is that one hour on the smallest is equivalent to half an hour on the medium. Or 15 minutes on the pro, or yeah. on, I'm sorry, on the most powerful one, which is called an EXO. And it's interesting the number of people that the 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 biggest buyers are the EXO because it's a time and money trade off. Yeah. People can share it, and some people are like, "Well, I want the best one." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But but that's where the they all work. It's just that the smallest device is really for people that have a lot of time and they can spend, you know, a considerable amount of time on it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's you know. available. Yeah, I like that idea of sharing. You know, rotating yeah. through it's it's a great great idea. But how powerful is that for um, nurturing a healthy environment? inside the body to let, allow it to do what it needs to do. It's like, I'm all about that. Right. So and it's so complimentary to what you do because yeah. activity, exercise, the right kind of movement, uh, the health of the gut, the right nutrition, all those things are right. like, they're all legs of the stool, you know, they, right. and then if you can amp them all up and make, yeah. make 
work better. That's that's a great thing. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Arena, that for coming on and explaining that a little better. Cause I definitely, when I saw Nano V, I was like, why do I not know about this and what is going on? So thank you for answering our questions. Um, I know on Instagram they can find you guys as Eng3 Corp. That's E-N-G3 C O R P as the handle. And then um, you know, your website is eng 3 corpcom Is there anywhere else you would direct people to learn more? Um, those are the main, there's, it's on lots of con- podcasts like Dave Asprey dug in on the science, Ben Greenfield dug in on the science, um, Serena Poon, there's a lot of different um, podcasts on it, which if you want to spend more time, yeah, that's, it. that's a good place to go. Luke Story did a great one with both um, Hans and I. So awesome. there's a there's some out there. Uh, Jim Quick has one with just me, but that's the one on brain performance. Which nice. Is- oh, I gotta check that out. I love is him. He's just the best. He's the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and thank so you. Those are some other places, and then we're super nice. Um, we're not obviously not pushy, or you'd see our device on every corner. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but happy to get research results out and speak to people. We've got, you know, yeah, we're ready. Yeah. to go. Appreciate you so much. Appreciate your energy. Appreciate you guys showing up and bringing this to the world and helping us learn more about it. It's, it's a, it's a, another powerful healing tool that we now have that we used to not have. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you for everything you do. It's much appreciated by a lot of people. Oh, thank you, Rowena. 